Hey YouTube, we're gonna get started on our first project. This video will be mostly focused on the research process and buying some tools. I spent a lot of time doing research and looking on YouTube and Reddit to see how to get started in a new hobby. This one is going to be about woodworking and the next few videos should be woodworking focused because I've always wanted to take this up as a hobby. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick what I'm currently working with. I don't have a workbench and there is not too much in our garage and looking into building a workbench, Paul Sellers has an awesome workbench, but I lack the skills to build this. And same thing with a Rubo, I can't build that. So I was looking into beginner workbenches and Matthias Wendell, he has an awesome channel for beginners, so please check him out. And I was initially going to build his easy to build workbench, uh, but then I stumbled upon Rex Cougar. So I've basically been watching a lot of his videos and we are going to try this English joiner bench. So I printed out his free plans. And I watched the video multiple times, seeing what tools I need. And these are the tools that we're starting out with. My wife had like, these are her tools. So I don't have any tools. We're gonna start with this. And then I watched his video over and over again seeing what tools he used and then i ended up buying these tools and most of them we're not going to start with because i'm guessing i'm going to build this bench very very slowly so these are just from harbor fright they're they're very inexpensive and and i can post a dollar amount if you guys like uh, but this is what we are starting with all right, let's get started with these trestles. I'm gonna stick to Rex's plans and go with a 33 inch height. My understanding is you could go up to 38 or 40 inches for more fine tuning work and then you could uh, go down to a lower bench for any rough work. I cleaned up the area a little bit, removed all the tools and just kind of kept the ones we needed to, to start making these preliminary cuts. I, I don't have any, I don't have a workbench yet, so I'm gonna try to make these cuts on the ground with these cinder blocks. We're gonna keep cutting, and it's been pretty difficult, uh, but this is, 33 inches, and then I take this thing, and then I make my marks, and I try to try to cut them. But it's it's been uh, I I don't really know how to use the tools yet, so I think until I get familiar with them. Um, uh, I don't think I really know how to use them correctly at this stage. Uh, I watched a few videos and you kind of want to uh, use the saw with, with your body and kind of want to pull with it. And honestly, I should, I should probably
at those videos that you watch, you want to you want to pull with your with your body. today so I'm sweating a bunch well, let's take a look it's, it's a little crooked I should have probably stayed in the line there all right let's keep going getting ready to do the next part gonna get ready to cut this apron piece I think it's called an apron. I'm still learning how to cut straight. It could be my on the ground cinder block setup. But if you look at my first few cuts, this one was terrible. Like, I don't know how to fix that. I'm gonna look into how to smooth these out so they're flat with the ground. But my later cuts got a little bit better. The apron calls for 21 inches, but I'm gonna do 20.5 because the top part of my bench is going to be this old door. I still need to do research and figure out what hard wood it is, but it feels pretty heavy and it measures in at about twenty-three and a half. and I think Rex was building his table to be 24 so that's how he got 21 here because these 2 by 10s I thought two by tens were actually two inches, but clearly a two by ten is about an inch and a half. So 21 plus three is I think how Rex got 21. So I'm gonna subtract three from 23.5 to get 20.5. All right, let's make the cut. All right, we're just doing more cuts, and I'm actually starting to get a little bit better. This one looks a lot straighter than all of my previous cuts. Using, still using the saw. You got your rip cut side and your cross cut side. I believe the, the side with the two teeth um, is your cross cuts, so it cuts across the grain and the side with one teeth would be the rip cut. So if we ever cut one like this parallel to the grain, that's my understanding of how to use this. And yeah, gonna cut the second apron piece. Got all the other ones over there. Kinda debating about giving up with hand tools and going to buy a circular saw, but I'm gonna keep at it. 
finally done making these cuts and I thought I was going pretty straight. That doesn't look too bad. Definitely had some blowout, but I'm getting better at the saw. And according to the YouTube video, Rex says uh, to pick the, the outside to be uh, the more aesthetically pleasing. So this is kind of the sides that I picked. I think they look pretty good. Show you guys my setup real quick inside. This is our kitchen. Not too much here. But this is where I kind of sit and do some research. It looks like Rex has about four pilot holes getting ready to drill those. Not too sure what I'm doing. This is the first time buying from Lee Valley. They're supposed to be a really good woodworking company. And yeah, very basic Google research. Just looking at what size pilot hole I need for softwood and what size countersink. Hopefully I bought the right size countersink. And yeah, I'm gonna prep those and show you guys the next step. All right, gonna prep the pilot holes. These are lined up pretty good, I think. Clearly, I didn't put it tight enough. Three measure. All right. Still a little bit tighter. it really I'm gonna go ahead and do the other ones so this next part Rex actually says to use just good old regular construction adhesive this is the one that I have and I'm gonna use the nifty little cutter there it didn't work very well, so I need another actual cutter. Let's try again. I got a knife and actually cut part of it off, but I, I, I didn't know how much to cut off, but I don't know. I think that should work. should read the directions. Make sure surfaces are clean, structurally sound. That's pretty clean. Uh, cut nozzle, puncture inner seal. Okay. Try one more time. 
I couldn't find anything to puncture, so I'm gonna try using a chopstick. Definitely clean. Oh, okay, that actually worked. Um, clean this well before using it to eat food. Uh, all right, third time's a charm, right? Let's see if we could actually glue these pieces together now. Oh yeah, that's working. Okay, I'm actually gonna clean this. That's pretty clean. And I'm gonna apply something similar to what Rex was doing. I think that's probably plenty. Try to line it up as best as I can again. Um, kind of starting to learn that this is going to be a very rough job. Yeah, that looks pretty straight. I'm gonna go. So I didn't cut this piece flat, so that's why it's not looking correctly. But after everything's glued together and screwed down, I'm probably going to try to plane this so it looks more even. This side's pretty even. So, I'm going to go ahead and screw these down. All right. I'm using number 10, two and a half inch. Look. That's actually very squishy. Let's see. I wasn't planning on it being that squishy, but I guess that's why they call it construction adhesive. All right, let's try it. That didn't look too good. I'm gonna strip this. Um, I'm gonna reevaluate. check number 10 one eight for a straight bit soft wood and I even checked like another website number 10 one eight soft wood and yeah this was the one I just used so I guess they're supposed to just fit like that Okay, back to work. So I just finished up this one and ended up trying to fill in the gaps a little bit with 
but adhesive. Not sure if that's going to make a difference. And the, the first one was, uh, was stripping a lot, but the other ones actually went in pretty smoothly. I think it just depends on uh, what area of the soft wood. Um, but yeah, I think these two are going through um, harder spots. Um, but yeah, gonna work on this one next. Here's my two by four. I'm trying to figure out if I just cut this at 45 degrees to get the two by four to fit. I'm sure there's a better way to do this than me figuring out how to make it fit like this because it doesn't look like I could just cut it at 45. It needs to be a little bit off-centered. We will see. I ended up with this piece. I should have looked online. I'm sure there's better instructions, but I try to do a 45 degree there and fits pretty well. It's still not, it's not going to be flat. I'm going to have to plane that after everything is done. I'm going to need four pieces of this, so I'm going to line it up and uh, make a cut there. And I could probably get three of these with this eight foot two by four. And yeah, got plenty of two by fours gonna need four of these so I'm gonna make those cuts now I was pretty close to giving up the the handsaw and thinking about getting a circular saw but I'm sticking to it I'm gonna keep working on cutting and after watching a few YouTube videos, you just really have to hold it steady. Use your body. Really try to let the saw do the cutting and not try to force it too much. So yeah, I'm going to stick with hand tools for now. The purest, the purest in me wants to keep using hand tools uh, but yeah I thought about buying a circular saw and uh, I already use the power tool I use my wife's uh, drill to put in the fasteners and I'm still still working in my flip-flops I, I know I should probably get some shoes and really enjoying the, the hand tool process. I like the physical sawing. This, this one's moving a little bit. I should probably uh, weigh it down a little bit more, but I'm trying not to use too much force. I'm trying to keep the saw straight and pulling with my body weight. This segment's going to be a little boring because it's just sawing and I have to do this for two more pieces. This one's looking pretty straight. It's not, it's not perfect. Still, um, still, still practicing, still working on it. As you can see, not perfect, still a little blowout, 
there, but it's a pretty clean cut. Not sure if you guys can see that. Checking it out in the camera. And yeah, gonna do that a few more times. All four of these done. I'm getting better at the sawing, but I'm sure you can tell, still not perfect. Still definitely some blowout, but a couple of cuts are pretty clean. I'm going to make my very first actual joinery cut, this half lap. The Rex's uh, video makes it look pretty easy, uh, but I'm sure I'm gonna struggle with it. I've also made a mistake. I wrote out like he did on this video, thinking this would be the outside, but that will actually be the inside. So this will be facing inside. I thought this was gonna be the outside, so I kind of picked like Oh, okay, this side looks pretty good, but this will actually be facing in, and unfortunately, the side facing out will be not as pretty. Has a, still has the writing on it from Home Depot, and I'm sure I could just kind of sand it down a little bit to make it look better, but caught a nice little mistake, and just to show you guys one more time. This is actually gonna be the inside. Because if you look at the finished product, um, the, the four by fours are uh, in this orientation. So, so the, the side that I thought was going to be on the outside, this side over here, you can see it's actually facing in, but that is one of the many mistakes we will make. And I'm going to go ahead and get started on these half lap cuts. Okay, I think I'm going to end the first video here. I did get the majority of the trestles done. Gonna work on the joinery next. Kinda see the setup over there. That'll be my first attempt at a woodworking joinery. So that will be part two of this workbench build because I think I have plenty of footage for the first part and that will be the beginning of the next video. All right, second video done.